Gee it. Hi guys, lovely to see all your smiling faces again. Um, welcome to vlog 9. It's been a protracted amount of time again, obviously, since vlog 8. Not going to make any more excuses, just to say I've got something in my mouth. But other than that, no, not going to make any more excuses, uh, just to say that um, the immediacy of anything I need to film in the forthcoming weeks and months is now ebbing away. Um, and anything I might want to film, well, it's going to be in location in that environment for some period yet. And uh, I won't be flying off or, or stopping its active behaviour. So it gives me more time to afford to the vlog, which is really important to me. Um, it just so happens that those previous few weeks and months were the, the high season, if you want. Um, any of you who um, accesses my Facebook account or my Twitter feed will know that I put up a couple posters to allude to the fact that the Scottish film is due. Um, it has a name, it's called The Tale of Two Eagles, and hopefully it'll be out sometime later this week, if not next weekend. I have to get a few OKs off some of the individuals involved. Um, it's up and listed on YouTube at the moment for them to access only, just to, just to see the footage, just to see the sequence that I've done and to tell me everything's OK. Beyond that point, a few little tweaks here and there and then hopefully it'll be an upload, as I say, later this week or on the weekend. That said, and this is a big lesson for anybody in film production, uh, editing like that and going through your rushes, and I had over 20 hours of rushes, at least over 20 hours, um, it leaves you with a very difficult task, a very painful task, of removing shots that you feel are adequate and, and great. And this is something you have to really, really tell yourself not to overload your film with all the footage you've got, because it will just be a horrendous amount of time, and you're going to bore people. Um, so it's hard, it's harsh, it feels that way anyway, but lots of these rushes end up on the cutting room floor. Whole sequences, in fact, sometimes. And that happened, actually, with this particular film, because anybody that's seen How to Find an Eagle, one of my shorts that I put up on, on, on uh, YouTube possibly six months ago, ten months ago, will know a place called Strathcon, and I go to, to try and access Golden Eagle. It's the site of a Golden Eagle territory in an eerie, and, you know, despite the size of these birds, um, they have massive territories up in the highlands, and locating them can be truly, truly difficult. So it's, it's brilliant if you know a place like Strathcon that you can access and take your chances then to spot one of these amazing birds. So one afternoon I went up there with the idea of filming this sequence which would end up in the film and since I've decided not to put in. So did we find eagles? We went to Strathconnan. Well let's take a look at this. Yeah. 
Well, also, second to that sequence, um, another thing that ended up on the cutting room floor was my evening trip to the village called Laid, which was just down the road from Oppenan, where the cottage was sited. Um, and the idea was to chance my luck at seeing Otter. Um, Laid Harbour, well, actually, it's a jetty, pretty much, um, offers the best chance in the locality to see Otter. Hadn't checked the tide times, decided to head down there. Uh, as it turned out, um, it, no utter, no utter turned up, but it was one of the most wonderful, serene evenings um, that I've ever spent up in Scotland in the Highlands. Um, and it had some wonderful, beautiful shots that, that I got from it. Um, but I couldn't validate wedging them in uh, to this film. So, um, for your benefit, here are those shots. But now, Thomas is going to introduce the return of this old favourite. So, what's in the head bag, Thomas? Wow. So it's Tommytronic 3D. I'm sure this is a bit of a blast from the past for many of you, as it is me. I had mine of Christmas 1984. These little bad boys were released in 1983. This is the Sky Attack version, as you can see up here. There was also a Shark Attack, I believe, and also a racing car version. But the 3D claim here wasn't an idle boast. These were actually the first handheld devices to afford you true 3D. How did they do that? Well, they did that because it was in a binocular fashion. This little device, as you can see, had a strap to go your neck and had two lenses left and right to view through in a binocular fashion. Then inside internally there were two separate screens and they showed at the same time the same moment in gameplay if you want but from two different perspectives. So as you look through the individual lenses left and right it afforded you a true 3D perspective. It was absolutely wonderful. That said this was the only downfall. It absolutely needed a natural light source. There was no internal lights at all to light up the screens and so it wasn't a game you could play under the quilt certainly in the darkness you just couldn't see anything you just heard a lot of things and still nothing um, but nice element here I noticed it was the first game that I certainly had that had a sound off button and that for me was absolutely crucial it meant I could take this game down to the lounge and if grandma was having a kip no problem if the parents were watching a soap no problem I simply turned the sound off and hey presto I could sit happily with them and carry on playing my game it's not the easiest thing to show you the gameplay in this because of the 3D aspect uh, but I will try and stick one of these lenses up to that lens there and what I'll do is I'll use my phone and the light source there from my phone put it onto the panel and we'll see if we can get any results. Let's have a look. Do 
Just before we leave uh, the Tommy Tronic, let's just have a look at this receipt which I found in the bottom of the box. Argus, Ilkston, and the 12th of October 1987. That's brilliant. I love it when you get some authentic little piece of information um, in the boxes with these things uh, from back in the day, as they say. That's the end of vlog nine, guys. Before I go, though, I have to congratulate the winners. The winners, the people who gave the correct answer to the teaser from vlog eight. Uh, the question, of course, in vlog eight was, what was Battle Cat's name uh, when he wasn't Battle Cat? And of course, the answer was Cringer. Absolutely, it was Cringer until He Man pointed his sword at him, emitted some magic, and he turned into Battle Cat. Uh, well done to Ian Phillips. Well done to Grant from the Simple Joys. Uh, well done to the Urban Gardener and well done also to Andy from Wild Suburbia UK. That then leaves finally the uh, teaser for Vlog 9 and it involves this little guy here. Um, hopefully if I put him close up and press the screen he shall be in focus. There he is. Massive cult figure from the mid 80s. Uh, incredibly popular TV series. Also an incredibly catchy theme tune. Uh, sorry if I've just given you the most horrendous earworm. Uh, but who is he? Who does he pertain to? Please leave your answers in the comments below but until now and then between now and uh, vlog 10 which i promise you will be a much shorter time than between vlog 8 and now um i'm missing you already please though do look out for the release of the tale of two eagles which is coming up midweek or possibly even sometimes towards the weekend between now and then please subscribe please hit the alerts bell for notifications of any uploads to this channel and please 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 do give me the thumbs up it really does mean the world to me cheerio guys